Operation meant to combat destructive smash and grab burglaries netted 144 arrests, but many of them were for unrelated charges. Investigative reporter Allison Blair dug into the numbers to understand the strategy. HPD Chief Joe Logan has called the recent crackdown a success, saying smash and grabs are down on Oahu, but experts say follow up and transparency are key. Damage left behind by smash and grab thieves is devastating. This surveillance video captured March 14th shows criminals using a stolen excavator to uproot the ATM at the American Savings Bank in Kapolei, causing a portion of the drive through to collapse. It's one of dozens of commercial burglaries that happened on Oahu in the last seven months. Between October 10th, 2023 and January 21st, 2024, there were 78 smash and grab burglaries island wide. The crime wave prompted many business owners to demand action from HPD. Hey, we have to work on something here. We kind of feel not supported. We just need as much help as we can get. The department responded by conducting an island wide operation to crack down on smash and grab thieves spanning January 22nd to February 16th. In early March, Chief Joe Logan briefed the police commission calling the action extremely successful. They made 74 arrests uh, and 193 charges in the regional patrol bureau. So that's everything outside of central Honolulu and east Honolulu. Um, and then 70 arrests and 149 charges uh, in the Central uh, Patrol Bureau. That statement prompted H&N Investigates to ask HPD for a list of charges the suspects face. Initially, the department told us the arrests were not tracked or compiled by category, but with help from the Public First Law Center, HPD eventually turned over a list of charges two months after our initial request. We then had them reviewed by retired HPD Deputy Chief John McCarthy. It just seems like a stretch to say that all of these arrests were related to that crime series. Records show HPD made just four burglary to arrests during its entire smash and grab operation. There were also a few dozen charges related to stolen vehicles and criminal property damage that McCarthy says might directly be related. However, H&N investigates found the vast majority of charges were for warrants, protective order violations and drug crimes. Also included were things like driving without a license, DUI, attempted murder, sex assault, traffic and bicycle violations, even child abuse. How do you connect them to the crime series or, or to the suspects? We asked the department to explain in an on-camera interview. Instead, a spokesperson wrote in a statement, the patrol districts used an indirect but coordinated crime fighting strategy, deploying plainclothes officers to various business areas during the hours the break-ins were most likely to occur. While surveilling these areas, the officers witnessed burglaries and other criminal activity. There's a theory called intelligence-led policing where you go after the bad guys uh, you may not get them on the crimes that they're necessarily committing, like in this case, smash and grabs, but you get them on crimes that hold and you incarcerate them. McCarthy says in this case, many of the charges suspects were arrested on would have them back on the street in a few days. HPD's statement went on to say after the operation commenced, the number of smash and grab business break-ins fell to nearly zero. H&N Investigates wanted to know how many of these destructive burglaries have occurred since its operation ended in mid-February. The department didn't provide a specific answer to our question, saying we have not seen a return to the number of incidents seen earlier. Meanwhile, clearance rates are extremely low. According to HPD's website, overall this year, 94% of burglaries have gone unsolved. Last year, 93% went unsolved. Why is data important? Data is the way for any taxpayer-funded government agency that we're going to be able to gauge performance and most importantly, improve performance. And without data, we have no idea whether we're going in the right direction or whether we need to take a different turn. Liam Chin is a public safety consultant and facilitates the Reimagining Public Safety in Hawaii Coalition. He says being transparent about what's happening in the community is to the department's advantage. It will build public trust and true accountability. Something else to keep in mind, crime trends are constantly changing. Think catalytic converter thefts. A couple years ago, it was a major problem, but not so much today. 
To dissuade criminals, HPD encourages business owners to have a security system that includes cameras, audible alarms, and 911 notification. Perimeter and interior lighting and reinforced glass are recommended when possible. Businesses that are in commercial areas that hire private security should discuss security options with their property manager. Allison Blair, Hawaii News Now.